So when I went there, uh, I, I, I was given a statement. The lady wrote the statement. Your girlfriend? My girlfriend. Mm -hmm. My lady wrote a statement that uh, yesterday, a stranger. You get the point? What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She said, a stranger by the name Mariano. Simba. Simba. Raped her. What? Yeah. Had plans. Had plans, bro. Had businesses going on. Had things I'd planned for. I was planning of building my, my parents a better home. I was thinking of building my own home, just investing. I was thinking of stopping rent in Nairobi just to look for space. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Bro, kila kitu ili yanda maze, ili crash. Mm -hmm. Well, what will you do when you realize that the love of your life framed you for a crime you did not commit and you find yourself facing a 10-year sentence? Well, welcome to today's episode of My Story with me, Kevin Phillips Momani, and this is Meshak Simba's story. My brother, how are you? I'm fine, sir. Uh -huh. Yes. How is everything? Oi, ni mungu. Ni mungu. Yes. It has to be God. It has to be God. Uh -huh. Without God, uh -huh. maze atuko. Exactly. Ni mungu maze. I love you to start by introducing yourself. Okay. Let me know what you do. Um, my, my name is Ma Meshak Simba. Meshak Simba is a, is a father. Mm -hmm. Meshak Simba is a God-fearing man. Uh, Meshak Simba is, a, is an actor by profession. Yeah, so he's a, Meshak Simba is, a, is like a, a universal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm everywhere. You're everywhere. Yes. You're an all round person. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Catholic. Catholic means universal. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Awesome. Where is uh, Meshak Simba born and raised? <laughs> yeah, well, Meshak Simba was born and raised in Kisumu. Mm -hmm. Dala, Kisumu City. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a, I grew up in a, one of the biggest slum in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in a Obunga. Obunga in Kisumu. Obunga in Kisumu. Uh -huh. We call it in French, Obunga Okorach to Yeber. What does that mean? <laughs> yani, obunga in a manisha like Obunga, ukiangalia view ya Obunga na inje. Ni mbaya sana, hatu wezi tamani kuhishuko. Mm -hmm. But ingia ndani, utapata flat screen ya 65 inch kwa nyumba ya matope. <laughs> <laughs> so, hiyo ndi mbaya natu ili inaitua like, okorach, inje ni mbaya sana, lakini ndani, yeber serious. Lia wezi tamani ku, ku, kutoka. Kutoka. Mm. Uh -huh. I, I grew up in an orphanage in Kisumu. Yeah, and uh, life in orphanage wasn't that easy actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wasn't that easy, but uh, I managed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why, why did you grow up in an orphanage? Okay, actually, my parents, I'm from a poor background. I, I was born and raised in a poor background. Mm -hmm. So the pastor, uh, he's called Pastor Lawrence Okongo, mm -hmm. who is my dad, and I'm wish him up to date. Mm -hmm. I really respect him so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was very devoted to church. You see, mm -hmm. so pastor Ali on same like, so uh, why can't you just come? You stay with us, as you dedicate most of your time to church. Because Ali on how serious I was, Kwamba was a church. Uh -huh. So that is how I joined the fam the family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to kanza kugro, kwa 
family moja mm -hmm. ya yeah, your home mm -hmm. and i remember being there it many strengthen unaona mm -hmm. play part of who i am today, today. Yeah, because living in an orphanage in a kume kukue hard mm -hmm. in life it's like living in a street mm -hmm. you get so you become hard with life you become hard with almost everything so that at least you know how to talk with people the pr kuongelesha mtu with respect nini mm. you see so is only part in your father play mm -hmm. also my dad also play a, the a, the best and great life in my life mm -hmm. yeah so i really give back to the society up to date uh -huh. yeah so uh, you will go to school yeah and come back to the orphanage to the orphanage uh -huh. this orphanage was, was in obunga in obunga uh -huh. obunga kasarani awesome you finished primary school very well uh -huh. yes i thank god yalikuwa na mimi uh -huh. yes and then you go to then i join high school mm -hmm. so after high school mm -hmm. nika join uh, college nika fanya nilikuwa nafanya course ya criminology but being that uh, mambo za maisha vile iko siku maliza nili drop mm -hmm. nikiwa second year mm -hmm. yeah awesome and then so after that uh, life wasn't that good actually mm -hmm. and i remember I was a uh, I am up to now a uh, life member of Kenya Red Cross. Mm -hmm. I remember participating during the post election violence as the the head of disaster mm -hmm. in Kisumu branch. Yeah, so that was some of the things I was doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when I before I came to Nairobi, I was the head of a drama team at the branch level of Kenya Red Cross. Mm -hmm. So I remember we had a uh, AGM of uh, general annual mm -hmm. at the branch mm -hmm. yeah at the regional so the coordinator approached approached us akauliza like is there someone who can do something for the visitors being that we again wanna talk from different location yeah being that nilianza mambo za acting kitambo sana acting acting nilianza kitambo from primary high school nilikuwa na act so I knew that is what I'm best most mm -hmm. or best at. Yeah, so I came up with a skit. Yeah, he in a tackle more about the fundamental principle of Red Cross. And uh, immediately after we, we finished pa participating mm -hmm. or performing for the the guest, yeah, uh, I remember the coordinator and it was Karen Akech. She's my mom na mheshimu sana actually I'm a play part and I'm fanya nimekuja Nairobi. Ya remember kaniambia like mesha sikutaki hapa Kisumu na kutaka Nairobi because what you have the more you uko hapa itakufa. So there's something aliona the 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 courage and the acting part in me. Aliona so akani connect na Jalango. Akani connect na Will Broder na Steve Ogana. And I remember my first time kukuja ku act in Nairobi it wasn't easy. It was a challenge. Because mm -hmm. uh, in Kisuma was one of the great. Unaona. So when I came to Nairobi nikapata sikumbe misi kukuwa mtu. <laughs> Jamani industry kuna watu. <laughs> so nikaona like eh kama mimi ndio nilikuwa na feel mimi ndio veto kule ni nimekuja kupata maveto sasa. So it was a challenge but I promised myself that Mungu mwenye amenitoa kule kuniweleta hapa kwa industry atakuwa na mimi all through yeah, all through mm -hmm. So I remember nilingia hivi nikapata watu walikuwa Marias show ime iko in less than one week mm -hmm. na watu wanafanya show Na hiyo show ilikuwa imebeba wazito wale watu wazito kwa industry like Jalango like uh, Joe Anderson ilikuwa watu wakubwa so i remember nikaingia kuingia nikapata watu wana Rias Ogana Steve Ogana ndiye alini introduce cuz Steve Ogana nilikuwa na communicate na yeye sana nikikuja Nairobi mm -hmm. so cuz Jalanga alikuwa busy sasa zingine ana pick call and sasa zingine uki call wezi mrich so when uh, nika meet Ogana nikaenda theater for the first time nimeona Kenya National Theater then i felt like 
this is the place I should always be. Mm-hmm. Unaona. So kufanya kufika hapo nikapata mazee watu people are yasing. Mm-hmm. They are trying they are fighting with the time because of the deadline ya siku ya kushoot. Yeah, and I remember approach you, the director by then Jacob Otieno. Nika approach Jacob Otieno na Joe Manderson nikamwambia like this script ni kali sana. But being that nimekuja late is there something I can do? I can come to Mazi Pole but you are late. Imebaki less than one week around three to four days na watu wana. So nikaka chini nika go through script nikaona vile the way it follows. Nikamwambia like bro wakubwa nikiangalia hii kitu kuna role nyingine haiko hapa. Waka wakashanga sasa huyu mtu wa Kisumu jamii mtu mwenye umetoka Kisumu wewe utatuambia nini na si ni wa wa Nairobi si ndio actors wakubwa mm-hmm. so they give me time nikaji express nika explain your role cuz hii role ilikuwa inapigwa na ilikuwa na hang mahali cuz unapata like mtu anaenda ku report before uende ku report police station you report to the nearest to the your chief mm. unaona kuna zile cases zingine yafa chief ndio anatatua na inaisha so uh, i came up with an idea of how chief anaizangizwa kwa hii play mm. so kuna wale wenye wa well, the wakini wakaielewa then wakasema like maze i ukijana kuna point but the majority wali ni chekelea they really loved sana so the director gave me that chance sawa si wewe ndio umekuja na hiyo role ya sasa wewe ndio ufanye hiyo role so nik tukarias nao second day third day tukaenda set kuenda set it was my first time to participate a crowd of over 400 people and uh, immediately after our first show mm-hmm. everyone started calling me the fans the audience mm-hmm. they started calling me igwe igwe you see like nearly kill i kill the show mm-hmm. with the small role i was playing mm-hmm. nearly kill the show actually i was like the winner you see everyone wanted just to greet me so i felt like them thank you god mm-hmm. yeah my prayer was un- answered actually mm-hmm. so after that uh, through acting i was in naswa i started at least a uh, people started to recognize me mm-hmm. in the industry and i came across a, a certain lady mm-hmm. so this lady it was uh, how do we call it uh, love on first sight right love at first sight. love at first sight actually mm-hmm. yeah it was that but for both of us we felt each other actually <laughs> yeah <laughs> i've not experienced that but <laughs> i know what you felt yeah yeah when you see me when you see me smiling on that uh-huh. my friend it was that mm-hmm. yeah so the lady was a fan of me she was my fan because she was watching me on naswa mm-hmm. so we interacted we exchanged contact i remember my first time meeting this lady I was with a friend of mine called Wycliffe Cliff Ngoy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Nyanga wiko Nyang. It's a friend of mine. Yeah, we were with Ngoy so I did the introduction. After that we exchanged the contract. So we started uh, giving it a room. You see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we started giving it a room. So after that uh, we started dating with mm-hmm. time. We started dating. I used to pay a visit at a hostel. Uh, in UN UN University of, University of the University of Nairobi uh-huh. I used to pay a visit there she used to pay me a visit at my place where I was staying actually mm-hmm. yeah so I was uh, also big in the industry I had a name now mm-hmm. I was in the process of kuomoka mm-hmm. yeah so <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is life uh-huh. yeah so after that uh, I got opportunity to venture into businesses. Yeah, so I became a businessman at the same time. Mm-hmm. I was also acting as a part-time. Mm-hmm. And uh, God opened a lot of doors for me. I started uh, dreaming the living the life I was dreaming when I was a boy. Mm-hmm. You know, with bo- her. Yeah, with her. You know, mm-hmm. a boy dream what a man does. Uh-huh. So I'd move from dreaming 
to, to reality. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I was so happy. We were so happy. My friends and colleagues. Yeah, every, life was totally good. Uh -huh. Yeah, so until, mm -hmm. until something happened. What is this? <laughs> hey, unasikianga kuna baridi na mtu ana sweat. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I remember uh, I also had a company of entertainment. Yeah, so there's a job. I got a link from the South Africa uh, production. So they were doing a certain advert mm -hmm. here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So I applied for the for the job. Obvious people apply when your proposal please them, they will give you a job. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I got the opportunity and uh, they came to Kenya, we were doing the job. You got the call and got the, secured the job? Yeah, I secured the job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so after that, uh, I was looking for models mm -hmm. to do the job. You know, mostly we deal with models. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they say charity begin at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when the charity begins at home, so I decided to give my lady opportunity. This is Sarah. This is Sarah. Uh -huh. To give her opportunity of uh, doing the advert. Yeah, so that, I call her. That was love, eh? That was love. <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh -huh. it, it, it was love which gave her the opportunity to do the job, not me. <laughs> yeah, love okay. he participate on my behalf. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I went to her room. To her room. To her room at the this is hostel. Uh, in the University of Nairobi. In the University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So after that, uh, I auditioned some of our friends, plus her, in her room. Mm -hmm. So we agree, okay, you, the shoot is tomorrow. You will be picked by our van. You will be picked from the gate of the school to the set then you'll be brought back again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we agreed everything. So on it was on Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember it was on Friday. We uh, sent a, f a colleague of mine who went there and picked them Wakakuja set. So after the shoot, now the people had to depart. And uh, you know, the dealing with these guys the foreigners so the the director was very close to me we were friends we mm -hmm. have been communicating so mm -hmm. they i was paid a check mm -hmm. i'm not going to quote the amount why not interchange <laughs> one <laughs> yeah so i was paid the check uh -huh. so you, the check had to match after some days uh -huh. yeah so being that i had a lot of movement from was one it side, some good money it was a good money uh -huh. so i had a lot of movement from one side to another mm -hmm. So I gave the lady, my girl, the key plus the check. She was relaxing in the car. So through that movement, I misplaced my phone. So I went home. I was mutaja, so I had to renew the line. Uh -huh. After renewing the line, I went to do what? To use the previous phone I was using. Mm -hmm. So when I went there, uh, I was in the house. A, a colleague of mine came and ask for like, is, do you need my assistance or what? So I told him, I will go to Sarah, go and take the check. Yeah, so that you can go and bank it mm -hmm. as we wait for the mature, mature date of the check. So this check that you give uh, the lady, you, you just gave her to keep it or? Yeah, no, I gave her because I gave her to keep it for me mm -hmm. because I had a lot of movement. Okay, on that particular day. Yeah, on that so particular day. So the same day you day. finish uh, this shoot yeah. is when you're given the check? Yeah, well, I was given, the, it was the D-Day, the last day. Okay. So I was given the check. Mm -hmm. So when a friend or this a colleague of mine went to pick the check, he found that the check, it was in a brown envelope written across with the red uh, color that confidential you mm. see you understand that yeah yeah it's not for everyone it's purely confidential, confidential. Mm -hmm. yeah so when the guy reached there the guy found out that the the envelope was opened mm -hmm. you see so the envelope was opened and uh, me personally i didn't open it so obvious the one i gave is the one who opened opened it, it. Uh -huh. I didn't know the motive behind it. I just didn't know anything. So he told me, like, but the check is open. So I asked him, like, but is the check there? 
at yes. Then maybe it's okay. Then if the go check bank, is there, yes. yeah, I'll go bank because uh, we need to have a meeting. We talk more about how the uh, the recap, how the job was. Mm -hmm. So I got miss call of Sarah. So when I called back, she she was in a room. She told me that uh, she's in the room. So I told her, okay, I'll see if I can find time, I pass by. So it was around, it was on Saturday. It was uh, around uh, 2 to 3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I drove myself to the institution. So I went there and I found the lady inside her room alone. I went and sat next to her on the bed. You know, the hostel, there's only one bed and a table and one, one seat mm -hmm. for study. So I went and sit at the bed. Yeah, so we started talking, asking how the job was. We had a good moment with the, both of us. We had uh, one of the best moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, around uh, three. Yeah, three rounds, moment, speaking, everything. Mm -hmm. So it was a... We had a good time. We had a good time, actually. Uh -huh. Yeah, so after that, uh, it was a bit late now because, you know, the campus rule 10-10. 10, no one is allowed below before 10 in the morning mm -hmm. and no one is allowed past, past 10 in the, at, in the evening. Mm -hmm. So it was around uh, 8, approaching 9 yeah, p.m. So I told her, like, because of time also is not on my side, so she told me like, okay, sir, because uh, she was in a week time, she was having a cut in a week time. So she gave me a push to the gate. I took my ID, I signed out. Every time I used to pay a visit, I used to sign in time, whom I'm going to visit, room number, plus a name. Mm -hmm. Every time I used to go, for the last two years I've been doing that. I went there and signed out. And uh, I remember uh, the security lady was there. She even called me by my name, like, oh, Simba, you are, you are now going here. Yeah. I told her, yeah, I'm going back. Hope uh, you guys are OK. I even gave her uh, some tip because I, you know, I understand at especially that time. Yeah, so I told her that we will communicate tomorrow. So me, I went, the lady went back. Mm -hmm. So it was on a Sunday. The next day, it was on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. I was preparing to go to church. I mm -hmm. was with, uh, we were with Ngoi, White Wife Ngoi, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, we was with the Ngoi Nyang. When I called, someone called me. So the person who called me, he called me by my name, you see. So they, he told me like, hi, hi Mariano Simba. You, you understand? Mm -hmm. The guy called me Mariano Simba. Then I say, hey, hey, who is this? because it was a strange number. Mm -hmm. Then uh, he introduced himself as the security, school security, the security of school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then uh, he told me like, uh, there's a lady who is your girlfriend. Your girlfriend has bring an issue here, a case. Your girlfriend, girlfriend. which means that these people knows me uh -huh. and they know the lady is my girlfriend, uh -huh. you see. So I told her, like, what is the problem? So the, he told me, like, uh, can you come to the office? Then I told him, yeah, I can come, even though I wanted to go to church. Mm -hmm. Then he said, yeah, kindly, just come to the office right now. There is a case. Mm -hmm. So I was like, a case? Mm -hmm. And I remember I left the hostel before 10. Before, before 10. Mm -hmm. So I tried to call this lady. Your girlfriend? My girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tried to call her just to, at least to ask if there's some, is there anything wrong or maybe something happened after I left. She didn't pick my call. I call, I call, I call, I texted, babe, please, can you respond? What's going on? Why am I being called by the security? She didn't respond. So I didn't go to church. Mm -hmm. So I went to the... You made your way there. I made my way to the school, mm -hmm. the hostel. So when I went there, uh, I, I, I was given a statement. The lady wrote the statement. Your girlfriend? My girlfriend. Mm -hmm. My lady wrote a statement that uh, yesterday a stranger. You get the point? What? Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. She said, a stranger by the name Mariano Simba. Simba raped her. What? Yeah. So I was like, is this a joke? Is this a prank, Bana? Because me, I'm an actor. I'm the one who should be pranking you. Why am I being <laughs> pranked? You see, it wasn't, actually, it was that, that, that statement, mm. Eleni, it, it really affected me. A stranger. A stranger. In fact, she wrote there that we, we have known each other for less than one week. So I'm a stranger to her. But the reality, we have been together for over two years. Mm -hmm. So it was like, since when did I become a stranger? And it is a lady you were planning to. It is, to a, it go is the not next only week. a lady. Uh -huh. This is, this is a lady whom I love with my heart. Mm -hmm. We were in even we were talking of we were in the process of. I was in the process of introducing the lady to my people, uh -huh. to my mother, to my pa to my parents. Uh -huh. You see, because uh, there's even a time she I gave her phone. She talked with my mom. Mm -hmm. So this is a lady, I wanted to settle with after she's done with school school uh -huh. this is someone i gave a whole uh -huh. my life the love and everything mm -hmm. so me i knew i was to spend the rest of my life with this lady mm -hmm. even though she had a daughter before kids are blessing uh -huh. they are blessing from god there mm -hmm. are those who are looking for kids but they cannot find mm -hmm. yeah so she, she was a single mom she was a single mom uh -huh. yeah and she she was a, a parallel student. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but she got a room in the hostel through some effort. My friend, it wasn't easy. Just to the underlying word of a, a stranger by the name by the name Mariano Simba raped her. What? Maze. Hmm? Anyway, so after that, the security could not give me a chance to ex express or to explain more. Within a few minutes, one of the security guys already had called the police. So when the police, uh, after calling the police, so it was, they told me like, uh, this is a police case. Simba, you, we know you. You are someone we know. You see, so the best thing, we can just go, we write a statement. Obvious I knew if it is a police case, there's a process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it became a police case. I took myself to the police station. Because uh, inside I knew very well there's nothing wrong I've done. Mm -hmm. And if I knew I've done something, I could not took myself there. You see, mm. yeah. There were many ways I could have done, but I chose to took myself there because personally, there was nothing wrong. So after reaching there, I remember I was taken to cell. So I told them like, why are you guys arresting me? Mm -hmm. And I've just come to, to see, just to find out what's going on. If I was that criminal in court, I could not have taken myself there. Mm -hmm. But I decided to bring mm -hmm. myself to the station because I know very well that I'm innocent. Mm -hmm. So I was kept there. Come on, as a, come, I was already a Mabusi, mm -hmm. Mabusi actually, mm -hmm. for three days, which was against the the constitution, which actually give everyone that anyone who has been arrested should not take more than 24, 24 hours. hours uh -huh. So these people already have, they had already broke that. I was, they, I was there for three days. Mm -hmm. No one, no one was talking to me, you see. Mm -hmm. So I also had to make some calls, I had to make some calls to inform my people where I am. Then the fourth day, these people, the lady came. The fourth day. The fourth day. Mm -hmm. So when this they, is this fourth day is when you. I was still in the in the cell. In the cell. And it's when you're seeing her for the first time. Yeah, 
up since Saturday. Since Saturday. Uh -huh. So when this lady came, uh, was called because uh, they were, uh, she went direct to the OCS office. Mia was in the cell. So when I was called, I went there and found the lady was there. The OCS was there and some of his junior officers. Mm -hmm. So I remember very well what the OCS told me. Mm -hmm. First of all, he told me that, what's your name? He asked, me, he asked about my name and I told him Simba. Then uh, the guy told me that, uh, we, let's go straight to the point. We know you have money. You get the point? Mm -hmm. We know you have money. You have money. This is the OCS? This is the OCS. This is in Central Police Station? No, uh -huh. Kileleshwa. In Kileleshwa? Yeah. Uh -huh. And I was told to give out 600,000. Actually, they started with 1 million. Uh -huh. So that I can, this case can, they, we, they clear it there. Mm -hmm. So I told them, me, yeah, I don't have money. So the, we talked, they wanted uh, half a million, 400. I told them, I'm a student. Where do you expect? A student to get such kind of money. So before I could finish talking, the lady said that, Mariano, you are lying. You have money. You get the point? Mm -hmm. Mariano, you are lying, you have money. Is this the check? So I, I had to connect why is this lady saying I have money? And I also remembered very well that I was told the check was open. Mm -hmm. and then what came over me was that like, oh, she, she saw the check. Mm -hmm. So I, I asked her, like, really, is it you who is saying all these words? So being that I could not give out that money, mm -hmm. I was taken back to my cell. Very early in the morning, I was taken to Kibera Lokot. And a strong instruction, I should be taken to a certain court mm -hmm. in Kebra. You get? Mm -hmm. I was taken to, it was court, court two. It was, uh, uh, you know, the magistrate was called Elizabeth Juma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe before you even uh, get to court, mm -hmm. what other kind of conversation did you have with the lady? No, outside? I was just asking why was she doing that? Uh -huh. She could not even say anything. Uh -huh. So, do you ask her if whatever she wrote was what happened? To yeah, I asked the lady. Uh -huh. And uh, if after asking this lady, mm -hmm. when she wrote the second statement at the police station, mm -hmm. now she had changed some. Mm -hmm. You see, because the first statement at the school was totally different, different with what she wrote. The police the, at the police station, uh -huh. but with some few changes. Uh -huh. You understand? What were the changes? I was still a stranger to her. Uh -huh. In the statement, I was still a stranger. Yeah. You go to court too. You went to court. Mm -hmm. Then after that, uh, the first what happened normally with the court process, it's either you accept you are guilty or not. Mm -hmm. So they read the plea. Obvious, I was innocent. So they read, are you guilty or not? Did you or not? I say not guilty. So I was given 14 days. I'll be brought back within after 14 days. Mm -hmm. So after that, I was taken to industrial area. Life in industrial area is like being in hell. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, bro. I only took, within that 14 days, I lost almost, almost 30 kgs. You understand? Mm -hmm. Bro, then after that, uh, my cousin came and uh, he, he bailed me out. Yeah, my late cousin, he bailed me out. So I was doing case when I was uh, well, I'm outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. How much do you pay for the bail? Uh, bail I was given 300,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, without cash bill, but it was, it was purely bond, no cash bill, it was a bond. Mm -hmm. I was denied cash bill and given a bond. So he gave out the logbook and I was given the freedom. So I've been doing this case when, while I was 
outside. outside. Yeah, and I remember very well my team, my advocates team, they produced every single thing that court wanted. Mm -hmm. Example, the evidence of clearing the issue of being a stranger. Because someone who has been paying you a visit at the institution for more than two years cannot be a stranger. Cannot be a stranger. Uh -huh. So the lawyer brought all my signatures, all the book from the security. security, where I've been signing in the name and everything, so we brought them. So this lady, before I go that far, mm -hmm. when we were having the best moment with this lady, mm -hmm. after having those best moments, she was uh, with her bear, she was with the brand, the pant. This is my girlfriend, obviously. We are okay. So we were I, was <coughs> I took my phone, I was taking us pictures, you see, like after shower your girlfriend or your man is changing so you can take photos. So I gave her, I took some of the pictures when she was with the bra mm. and the pant until she changed, she put on her clothes, <coughs> I was taking some pictures. So after that, she told me, but like, she knew you were taking Yeah, she them. knew I was taking. Mm -hmm. She even told me, like, let me see the pictures. Mm -hmm. So the moment, the process she was going, she, I was giving her the phone. You know, this touch screen phone, when you hold any key, the button, it goes back to the screen saver. Mm -hmm. You understand? So when I gave her the phone, I don't, I think she mistakenly just hold one of the key. Then the, the screen saver popped in. And what she saw, was the selfie I took with that lady. You remember, I, this is the phone I was with the previous time before I uh, mm. misplaced the mm -hmm. other one. Maybe before, when is this moment? This is, or it was on a Saturday when after we had our best moment. It's when she notices this. Yeah, immediately after we had uh, our best moment. Uh -huh. So I was taking her pictures uh -huh. as a boyfriend, girlfriend, which is normal. Okay. And she knew I was doing that. Uh -huh. So it was, it was not adding up. This is someone who even produced the pictures in court. As she was posing, she's a model. You know how models normally post for the pictures? Mm -hmm. All the movement of posing. I took those pictures. You see. So my lawyer was asking, like, can you rape someone? Then after rape, you tell her to post the picture, to post, and you take her pictures. Yes. And at the same time, under the, the statement she wrote, she, she said that I left her unconscious. unconscious. So the, those things were not adding mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. You understand? Even anyone can just understand this thing is not adding up. Mm -hmm. Don't forget she wrote, she wrote there that I'm a stranger. Exactly. We had produced all the security, do, the security uh, details. state details showing that I'm not a stranger. You are making frequent visits. I was making free, frequent visits. Mm -hmm. You see, even at where I was staying, I wish we had that uh, security details. She could have been like, all, most of the time, she normally used to come like every Friday going back on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So she was no longer a stranger to me. We were not strangers. We were lovers. So the question was, how can, how can someone who have been raped, you understand? someone who have been raped can stand and pose for the picture mm -hmm. as a model before going unconscious before going unconscious or <laughs> she post she did all those things then went back unconscious again you see mm -hmm. it was not adding up mm -hmm. so at first the arresting officer was totally against me you see the harassment of the court name of rapist you understand that mm -hmm. and it, it was not that easy to cope up, especially at the court level. Mm -hmm. Prosecutor was a woman, judge woman, court clerk woman, the whole chamber. You understand? And this is a case of rape. What? Mm -hmm. You understand how, how hard it was? Mm -hmm. This is a case of rape. Then those who... What the handlers? The handlers, like those who should be neutral to everyone. The whole women, obvious, you understand? Mm -hmm. You see, it was not easy. So I told uh, the arresting officer, can you go and uh, visit a crime scene? Mm -hmm. My, in fact, the lawyer told, told her when we were at the court. So this lady went and 
went to the University of Nairobi to see the location. This is a, just a small cube whereby when you cough, the neighbor will hear you coughing. Mm -hmm. You see. Even when you are laughing, your neighbor will hear you laughing. Mm -hmm. Can you rape someone under such scenario, such environment? And, uh, and I left at nine, whereby the neighbors were, 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 were cooking, and we could even hear them laughing and, and, uh, and uh, enjoying themselves at the same time, the neighbors. So it was not that easy. Mm -hmm. But the court went ahead. Mm -hmm. hey. Mm -hmm. Bro, sometimes being a boy child is, is not easy. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So through this process, I was going to court. So, uh, but, but while on bond? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, while on bond. Then uh, I decided that uh, I, need to, I need to move on with my life. So... I got a lady mm -hmm. who was, uh, I was totally open with her. I explained everything, what happened. Mm -hmm. So she accepted me the way I am, mm -hmm. plus everything. So while, while the case is ongoing, yeah, you meet another lady. I met another lady mm -hmm. whom uh, we dated for some months, then she got pregnant. Mm -hmm. Then after that, she gave birth mm -hmm. to a baby boy. Yeah, and I remember sometime we used to go with her to the court. She used to accompany me mm -hmm. yeah, to the court. Yeah, then uh, we got another baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then uh, through that process, it wasn't easy actually, because uh, just to accept Actually, you know, even falling in love became a challenge to me. Mm -hmm. Like loving, loving someone with all your heart, loving so tight became a problem to me, mm -hmm. you see. Because I was like, if I love this much, will the same thing happen again, you see. Mm -hmm. So I became a victim of love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, we worked it out. It was a journey. Then I remember it was on 2017, my wife was pregnant again. Mm -hmm. uh, she was seven months pregnant. I went to the court. It was on time, reaching there. <laughs> I found the, the, the court, everyone was there. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, because uh, I had consulted my lawyer and he told me like, Let's go. The only thing remaining is just court to to give me freedom mm -hmm. because everything we had all the evidence proving how innocent I am and everything. Mm -hmm. So when I went there, I went to the bar as usual. Then uh, all of a sudden, I remember the magistrate Juma mm -hmm. said that uh, I have a case to answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I have a case to answer. The first thing that triggered my mind was like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. You see, I wonder, why is it that I have a case to answer? Then I look at my lawyer and uh, he could not look at me. He was just looking down. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the magistrate, I remember, she said that uh, she will be taken back in to the industrial area mm -hmm. for seven days to wait for my judgment. Mm -hmm. The ruling. The ruling. Mm -hmm. So the lawyer, the lawyer told, told, the, told the magistrate that if you have to make your ruling right now, you jail him, jail him now. There's no need of giving him seven days. Then I remember I was told to wait for one hour. So that one hour I called my wife. It wasn't easy, Mazi. 
You know, you left the house knowing you are going home. You'll be back in the evening. evening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then uh, all of a sudden things changed. And I remember It, was, it wasn't that the way I had planned it, bro. Mm -hmm. and I remember I make a call. I made a call. I told her, can you come to industry? Can you come to the uh, the court, uh, Kibra law court? Mm -hmm. And uh, she asked, like, is everything OK? I told her, you just come. If you can manage, just come right now. Mm -hmm. She was heavy that heavy pregnant with two kids yeah. again yeah mm -hmm. she was totally heavy so she came and uh, the time she came she came a bit late that uh, already I've, the two hours the one hour had passed so i was called back to the the courtroom and uh, it was she said on her own opinion you see, mm -hmm. the magistrate said, on opinion, she think like I'm guilty and uh, I was jailed to serve 10 years in prison. What? Your wife was there watching? Crying, not only watching, but crying. Mm -hmm. Bro, 10 years. Had plans. Had plans, bro. Had businesses going on. Had things had planned for. I was planning of building my my parents a better home. I was thinking of building my own home, just investing. I was thinking of Stop paying rent in Nairobi just to look for space. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Bro, kila kitu ili yenda mazi, ili crash. Mm -hmm. The magistrate ali cut my shy angu yanu. Shy ona dream mazi hina like you are a driver, you are you are driving towards Malim Teremuku na ona vile. Ona yani breaki me katika gari na eda mazina ona nganga na na ona feel like there's nothing you can do. Maybe ona say matu like ah, watch a god at control. That was the life nili kwa na go through at that moment. Yani hours became. Years, Maze. It was painful. Mm -hmm. Seeing my family, my friend, my close friend, came Maurice Prince Okombo, Maze. It wasn't easy. I was taken in, mm -hmm. so now I was to serve 10 years in prison. I had nothing I can say, there's nothing I can do. The only thing I was told I can appeal within 14 days. Mm -hmm. it was that painful. What, do they, what does the magistrate say as evidence that warrants you going behind bars for 10 years? There was no evidence to pin me down, bro. Mm -hmm. There was totally no evidence to pin me down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I remember very well even when we were doing this case, mm -hmm. when the arresting officer there, yo, after doing the conclusion, visiting the crime scene, everything, when she was testifying, now her turn, it was her turn, mm -hmm. she told the court that these people were lovers. This guy, Simba, and uh, Wanjiku, Sarah, these guys were lovers. Through 
Njiko Wamboi. Wamboi Wamboi. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm. Gasheke. Mm-hmm. They were lovers. There's no way uh, because she had already even met roommate who told uh, the whole story these people are lovers. They never knew I was the the targeted. So this is something which was well planned. So me I was just a fool who is full in love. You see. Yeah. Mhm. So with all those things Mazi I was still taken behind bars. I went to industrial area. Mm-hmm. I remember my wife was totally green. I was there communication became hard. So I was taken to Nairobi West Prison. Mm-hmm. My friend for the first time umekaba. Kukaba is squatting tano tano. Hiyo ndio sheria. It wasn't that easy. I remember the first time as a na change I was in uh, official I'm a suit guy I used to put on uh, official all the time mm-hmm. my friend it was the first time nimebuva kunguru mm-hmm. kunguru, kunguru kunguru ni ile uniform ya zebra uh-huh. and i remember zebra yenye nilipewa bro ukishika nguo hivi uangalie chini yake hivi ukifanya hivi mm. unaona nini zinakimbia inaitwaje kunguni kunguni mhm zinakimbia ukifanya hivi ukifanya nguo hivi like 20 zimeanguka chini na ni zile nono nono unavaa bro it wasn't easy mm-hmm. it was hell but i used to pray all the time through this process <coughs> bro it wasn't easy then uh, ni kanza ku adapt ku accept normally people die in prison mm-hmm. because they have not accept where they are once you have accepted i'm in prison let me live according to where i am you see mm-hmm. so i had to accept that do you stay in prison for 10 years no actually mm-hmm. god did a miracle mm-hmm. I was to according to my card there's a there's an ID prison ID mm-hmm. there's a card my card it was written I was supposed to be out of prison 2025 January 12th mm-hmm. that was the that is what was written and I used to say this is what is written here but my god will not allow me to serve that long mm-hmm. so I only serve Two years in prison Two years Two years wow instead of 10 years mm-hmm. i only served two years in prison mm-hmm. yes how was that possible ni god mm-hmm. ni god god alifanya miracle mm-hmm. yeah i remember i told you about appeal mm-hmm. yeah so we had a, a new lawyer and uh, we appeal and uh, appeal I will, I'm out because of appeal uh-huh. yeah god uh, so my cry my people's cry my parent and uh, god gave me a second chance what now when, when uh, the lawyers appealed mm. what evidence did they bring this time round in fact uh, i remember very well the day my lawyer was uh, testifying on my bias bf <laughs> Uh, about the previous quoting the 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 challenges or the things that uh, the lower the lower court ignored mm-hmm. they had a lot we had a lot of uh, challenges you see mm-hmm. then through that process i remember the uh, the judge luka kimaru honorable luka kimaru may god give him more life is one of the best lawyers the best uh, judges mm-hmm. we have in kenya may god give him more life to live yeah luka kimaru is a very understanding man he was so quiet he understood everything and i remember after i remember very well after after the my lawyer 
my advocate had already presented what what was needed from our side. Mm -hmm. In the court courtroom, there were many prominent lawyers, like uh, Omamu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, yes. Advocate Omamu. Mm -hmm. uh, there were Orengo was there. There were many advocate, and uh, this uh, senior counsel is called uh, Abdul Nasir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember he told me like. You are so lucky. Yeah, Utachilewa. After Kuskia, the whole uh -huh. case, our side story. Uh -huh. the, my lawyer was Alikwana Metiga, Alikwana give out. Mm -hmm. to that. We Utachilewa. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Congratulations, and I'm still in prison. On this day, mm. when uh, you're attending the, the final uh, ruling of your appeal. Yeah. Is, is it the same day that Ahmed Nasir tells you congratulations? No, he told me, he told me almost two to two and a half months before. Before? Yeah. Okay, then so before I was called now back for, back for either if I'm serving or go to quit my case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you appeal, uh -huh. there are three things you will find there. You, you, you will be waiting for three things from the judge. One, You'll be told the lower court sentence was okay, serve it, or they, will, they can add you more sentence mm -hmm. than the way the one you are given. You see, mm -hmm. or they can release you from prison. They can one as a kukwacha. You see, work it like you are unlawfully sentenced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can acquit your case. Mm -hmm and told to go home. Mm -hmm. You see, and that is what happened to me. Mm -hmm. My friend, when I was told mm -hmm. by the judge that Simba umeachilewa, to me, ata, that word like umeachilewa ikukuja kumendi yangu. Mm -hmm. Unaona? I was like, really? Um, can someone please interpret what he's saying? I could not even understand that word. Mm -hmm. Until another judge, another, 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 another advocate, he, he tapped me and told me that, wait, congratulations on my achelewa. And I was like, ah? Huh? What? What? And everyone in the court saw the, my reaction. It was like, hey, God, I'm a funny kid. Was your wife again there? My wife was there. This time round she was there? Yeah, this time round she was there. Again? Again. And she used to come to prison see, to see me almost every week. First of all, Mr. Momani, mm -hmm. in this world, Either unyimwe kila kitu, but not freedom. Mm -hmm. Freedom is the most important thing. Ukinyimwa, maisha miaribika. But the moment I got my freedom back, yani ni God maze. I was so happy. And life really changed from the moment I step. Immediately the ear get ya inja ivi ya prison. Ili anza ku breathe a different hair. Mm -hmm. You know pale we are so many so we breathe one. Your hair wa moja. Mm. But the moment ni step out of that place. Ili anza kupata the freedom at least. Una pigu no pepo tofauti. Mm -hmm. Remember my child, my last born daughter, mm -hmm. was born in Kiwandani. Naskia. Mm -hmm. She used to bring my kid every time anakuja. Mtu ya kiwa mdogo, na leza through years. Every time mtu ya kiwa mdogo, mtu ya na grow, every time mtu ya mekamu na unameongeza wetu. Unaona? 
mm-hmm. but the second born alikuwa mdogo but ye alikuwa alikuwa anauliza lot mami baba kwapi when when is my dad coming back and every time akikuja naona like that mbona mmevangu the same now watu imagine what did you used to tell your kid I just used to tell him like baba is coming very soon I'm coming there's even a time ali kata anasema nataka kubaki na baba mhm my brother my younger brother we only two brothers mm. my younger brother aligongwa na gari hapa area embakasi itandran na ikaenda ikachukule wana good samaritan to mama lucy akakufa huko na huko kijana alikam alikuwa naishi na mimi so alikuwa nilimrentia nyumba just within very close alikuwa anafanya na true black hizi mambo za entertainment mm-hmm. my brother alikufa hakuna mwenye anajua penye yako when you were in prison when i when i was in prison Mm-hmm. My mom ana communicator na pigia ma wife wangu mtoto wangu aonekane yako wapi Alipotea for four months kama kuna mwenye amejua pigia yako Kumbe mtu wako mama Lucy Mochari Four good months so my friends ndio walikuwa namtafuta na wife wangu walikuwa namtafuta so one day through checking of fingerprints police wali waliangalia fingerprints once taken in a indicate the id na penye anatoka alafu waliweka kwa group ya the karachuonyo and that is how my brother was found mm-hmm. after the dog mwenye alikuwa namwangalia mm. aliona name of simba he knew me utulijua na naye though he was not sure if this is the same simba a uh, brother to that simba alijua mm. that thing ile ni torment a scenario whereby your own brother am a pass anazikwa you cannot attend mm-hmm. just because of someone you loved someone you gave your heart ameku mess up My brother was buried mm-hmm. <laughs> What else probably uh, did you lose while in prison Maze a lot I remember one of the biggest and the biggest thing I lost when I was in prison <laughs> is not being there for my last born being born mm-hmm. a scenario whereby you are not there mtoto wako anazaliwa you are not there mm-hmm. you understand you are not there bro your wife anaza through csp and challenge you not there i was not there seeing it holding my baby for the first time na kunguru na zebra hata unaogopa kumbeba vizuri cuz nini inaweza hizi nini uma watu inaweza hata zingia kwa mtu huyu unaona nilikuwa hata nimeogopa mazee mm. bro nilipoteza vitu mom mm-hmm. Nilipoteza biashara zangu all the businesses I was doing mm-hmm. hivyo I lost friends Mwana came back bro Nilianza from zero mm-hmm. you understand from a three, three bedroom to bed sitter Nilipoteza kila kitu I lost everything How did your wife and kids survive when you were in prison? Life wasn't easy for them. And I remember my father in law. Mhm. May God had him more life maze. 
he stood as a father to me. Mm -hmm. he, he, he is, is the one even who gave me the lawyer. The advocate who I was appealing to. He was the advocate. Akakuja. The first payment he made. He was going to take care of my family. Father and mother. Ma, my mother-in-law and my father-in-law. And all you can take take care of my family mm -hmm. while I was not with him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know it must have been tough. Hmm. What is the first thing you did? Nikki? What's the first thing you did immediately you stepped out of that place? <laughs> the first thing I did mm -hmm. Nikki step out of prison nearly in fact I didn't even tell anyone. Wa wali when you wali jua wali jua but wa chache sana. Mhm. Nilienda tu mzee nikaenda tu kwa nyumba nikatulia. Then nili, the next day nilienda church. The same same place where I am right now. Mhm. Mm and that is the main reason why I decided we come here. That's why we decided that we do the interview in interview this church. This church. What? Yeah, I'm Kujua. Mm -hmm. That is the main reason why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whoa. Did you maybe think of looking for the lady who framed you for this <coughs> and try maybe make peace or something? <laughs> what? You know, the moment I was in prison, there's one thing. I was taught or I learned while I was there mm -hmm. to let go of things. For you to move on, you have to let go of the past. Let go and let be. Let go and let be. But the moment you keep on rem reminding your mind, reminding yourself about the previous life, you will be stuck. Your life will be stuck. Mm -hmm. You see, I went through some counseling. I also thank God about uh, DJ Shiti, yeah, Stephen Dede. Mm -hmm. We used to talk more about this. He used to tell me like, Mariano, the best thing to do is to let go of such thing. Mm -hmm. You never know the reason why God allows such kind of things to happen. You see, mm -hmm. I remember Kanyambia like, God had a reason. At least now, this is a different chapter in your life. Mm -hmm. You see. So we used to talk. We, I used to talk when I was out with Didi Shiti, Steve-O. A lot of encouragement. I thank him for that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Didi Shiti for standing with me too <laughs> along the rest of this process. Then after that, I went home just to see my parent mm -hmm. and Kusumama Kwama. Kaburia brother mm -hmm. Then after that, I came back with my family. I took two weeks. Then I got a call from my mom that dad is not feeling well. I went back. Dad was not feeling well. He was weak. Losing a son and another one is in prison. It wasn't easy for him. Mm -hmm. He tried his best, actually. So when I came out, <coughs> he was weak. After we went home, when we came back to Nairobi again, the next, after three days, I got another call. Mama Kanyambelek, Father Akosi, and he's very weak. Nanakuita. Before I could reach home, in fact, I was my town center, so I'm going to the hospital. I got a different call. And I was told Father may pass. What? You never got to talk to him and know what he wanted to tell you. 
I never got that opportunity. I was late like 15 minutes. My father will already early pass. <coughs> but nearly to my a friend of mine ali ali kuwa home. Home kuwa una kwetu sio mbali sana around 40 km. So I'm going to be like Maurice ebu enda enda osi father is not feeling well. So in fact ye ako kwa get ya osi ako kwa hiyo corridor ya kufika penye father yako na una pass. So I, I could not reach father. Mm -hmm. So friends stood with me, bro. What was well, Mama Nasis in a mimi? Some of friends, some of true friends. In this world, we have true friends and fake friends. So true friends stood with me. <coughs> and uh, I remember one of my friends. Mm -hmm. Honorable Okoto Pande is an uh, aspirant in Nyakach constituency. Now, Mbamunga Msaidiye, apate yokiti. Mazeali Nicola can be like, so sorry, my brother. Ali Nicole Mazia Kanyambia. Bro, my name is Tokandani. I Auna Auko Poa, but uh, I will make sure Father Mazik Wapoa. Alinisho maze, mtakikisha fadhi ya meze kwa poa bro. Nikona wewe tuko pamoja. Ali participate maze. Ali participate sana. Plus all the friends. My friends, the, we, we call ourselves the Olowian. <laughs> The low, low team, low yan maze, walis, momana mimi, mm -hmm. friends, wali come through. Exactly. Na fadia kazi kwa poa. Mm -hmm. Plus my family, relatives, everyone, wali participate. Adi fadia kazi kwa. I thank them so much. Na shukuru sana bana. Mm -hmm. All those who participated maze to make sure my dad get a best send off na washukuru bana how again now after that do you Adi DJ Shiti pia participated mm -hmm. sana maze mm -hmm. he was there with me mm -hmm. Adi Jalango Jalango pia li participate the Lulikali group maze the family wali ni pia mkono mm -hmm. yeah how, how then now, after that, do you recollect yourself? How do you begin now taking your life ahead? So after the burial, I came back with my family. Mm -hmm. Then uh, DJ Shiti called me. Mm -hmm. I can be like, Maze, kuja, kuja to pick a kazi pamoja. No, no. Because to live on Shiti and I, we knew each other. We have a journey. Mm -hmm. To the Lala Street, to Melala, Kwa railway station, Pale, Pamoja Maze. Atu Kwa na Penetu Naza Enda. Yeah, so. Gijan. Yeah, so I can't be like Mariano Kam. Kuja to Chapekazi. So he gave me a role on the DJ Shiti show. Mm -hmm. Kanza Kupiga show. So. We have been doing this together. Sabu hii ni metuwa saizi niani? Okay, sama gari. Sichuvi ni ungena. Ungacha tu ni ungena mwenye gari. Oja sikujui. Hii ni kitu watu bila mwili hapa. Mwili yangu sijui maliko. Kitu wa bila mwili. Kutu mtu kwe, bro. Kutu na kaya nini hapa? Bro. Kutu na kaya nini hapa? Bro. Kutu na kaya nini hapa? Kutu na kaya nini hapa? Kutu na kaya nini hapa?
so as like now you fully depend on acting yeah I mean I depend on acting but naweza naweza omba wa Kenya maze mm -hmm. naweza omba wa Kenya wakikubali mimi ni vitu vitu nne tu maze nikipata naweza kuwa sawa mm -hmm. nikipata kamera tripod unaona mm -hmm. light mm -hmm. <laughs> no way. I'm, 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 I'm joking. I'm joking. But I see what you did there. <laughs> okay. Mm. Yeah. So okay. You depend on acting. I only depend. I only depend on acting. Mm -hmm. Mas even though acting uh, alone cannot sustainable life ya mtu yani mm -hmm. so mi kitu yenye naweza omba wa, wa Kenya sio sio kamera na light <laughs> but naweza omba wa Kenya maze mi ni actor so the productions this is any any production naweza work with bro mm -hmm. ya yeah, either kwa kufanya hizo ma commercial ma adverts uh, voice over mm -hmm. unaona hata production ile yenye inaran kwa kwa TV poa mhm mm fanya like uh, kuna zenye nimekuwa nikiitwa itu pia nafanya kidogo kidogo mm -hmm. at least inaweza nisaidia kuji sustain kabisa yeah so mhm mm naomba tu wale wenye wa, wanaweza tamani kunisaidia at least nipate nipate mzizi you see kwa acting kwa acting mm -hmm. yeah even doing a commercial hizo ma, ma adverts naomba tu Mungu anipe nafasi za kufanya hizo yani hiyo uh -huh. nafasi ndio bado sijapata but nikifanya nikipata hiyo nafasi naweza fanya kitu poa sana it will come it will come the god who saved you from maze 10 years in prison in 10 years the god who reduce my sentence from 10 to 2 mhm mm hata nionekani kabisa yeah have you tried to find out i know you told me earlier that uh, you forgive sara yeah Have you tried finding out where she is or you just let everything go? I've I've not find out where she is as per now. Mm -hmm. But I know wherever she is. Mm -hmm. I want her to know that missing anything. I'm not holding anything. Uh -huh. I'm not holding anything against what she did even though what she did is, was totally wrong. Mm -hmm. But me uh, you saw you let go. I let go. Uh -huh. Yeah so many let go of whatever pen hata ni same like tukikutana nae kwa barabara we'll just say hi na niende zangu mhm mm unaona me my shame ni funza bana of being who i am and letting go is the best thing wow you see mm -hmm. when you hold something bro there kuna maisha huko there's a better life ahead of you Mm -hmm. There's better life ahead that than living an acceptable life like you don't want to accept the kind of life you're living. Exactly. You see? So when when uh, when I hold for to when I hold it you see how what will I gain? It will just hold you back. It will just hold me back. Mm -hmm. You see you're a man of a big heart. Sometimes in a bidi bro because mm -hmm. uh, niki nikimshikia bro it's it's god that is you know your god mm. that is god's role to decide mm -hmm. you see yeah me what happen i have, have to accept but i love up here i want to give thanks to this beautiful woman who decided to who stood with me during my hard time i just enjoy good time with me sana cause good time bad jafika na hope itafika yeah but the hard time ame to me go through maze i'm stand there she has always been there for me paying me a visit every week in prison maze na mheshimu sana who is this she's uh, the mother of my children mhm ndio mama yeah maze kama nasikia hii nataka jiwe na mpenda sana sana she's a strong woman very strong i know she's a strong woman but i mean strong nimesurvive <laughs>
<laughs> it's a family of strong <laughs> people. It's a family eh? of strong, strong people, mm -hmm. Yeah. So what else are you doing outside the acting? Mm. Outside acting, uh, as per now, there's a project I'm working on. Mm -hmm. uh, this project nearly ili kam kwa mind nikiwandani when you in prison when i was in prison mm -hmm. bro when you see someone akiva zebra never judge those people mm -hmm. prison almost 70 to 80% are innocent what almost 80% are innocent sure yeah are innocent bro prison iko na talent na vijana wengi wanasafa sana. Mhm. So when I was there I came up with a project. Mm -hmm. Currently it's on it's a paperwork but very soon itakuwa inje. Mhm. Mm Naomba wa Kenya wanipe mkono pia kwa hiyo plus the Tuko family. Mhm. Mm ya kutupea nafasi hiyo cuz tunataka ku we want to tap into talent of the trap, prisoners trap we want to scout trap and expose them the talent in your okay in the prisons in the prison and out of prison wow cuz una pata like the majority of these youths who are talented they work for prison mm -hmm. so we want to give them a second chance by a way of finding a way of how can we welcome them back to the society because una pata like majority of these youths when you wako ndani una pata like mtu wako ndani alikuwa like one year ago na merudi mhm una pata like the society wamekata ku accept there's a mentality a perspective view ya society like ah mariana amekuwa prison uni mtu mbaya you see that mm -hmm. you are judging that is a judgmental mm -hmm. you see so una pata like mtu anaweza kubali ku back to crime kama in case alifanya crime anaweza unapata society wamemkata na wenye wanamkubali ni wale mafelo gang wake wale watu wabaya wenzake mm -hmm. welcome so unapata like society wanapoteza mtu mwenye ame reform because wanakata ku accept because of jina like he was in prison exactly. and yet this person ame 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 change mm -hmm. it is not a prison it is called a rec uh, correctional facility. facility. Mm -hmm. You see, you are there to be corrected. You see, mm -hmm. you are there to be corrected. You are there to be corrected. Now be in this place. Now, uh, rec correctional facilities are very sana. You have to be corrected. You have to be corrected. Prison, once you are there, it is a decision of, ind of an individual. You can either leave prison ukiwa worse or you can leave prison ukiwa best you understand but your best for you it was best for me it was best uh -huh. because there there's a lot of things in Indonesia kuna lot of programs zinaletwa pale unaona kuna lot of function functioning government facilities unapata like pale mtu akitoka anatoka kiwa electrician mm -hmm. anaweza toka kiwa mechanic anaweza toka kule kiwa fundi wa mbao watu wanatengeneza vitu vitu mzuri sana mm. unaona so pale ni individually ukitaka ku change will change ukitaka yes. kuharibika utaharibika mm -hmm. but unapata like these people wanatoka kule wakiwa na grade zote mtu ni fundi mkali sana mhm mm plumber yeye ni mkali sana but society bado wanakata bado accept bado wanaona wanaangalia vingine Huh? bado wanawaangalia vingine na bado wana yeah. mm -hmm. unaona so what the project ni tuko nayo we want to showcase the talent of these people prison kuna watu wenye wanaimba we have comedians we have actors we have singers these people we want to give them a second chance and a second platform unaona mm -hmm. already as per now me work na different some few prisons Mm. Yenye unapata like mtu akitoka wale wenye wameserve wakitoka naambi wa like Mariano the simba kuna huyu na huyu ambao umetoka amefanya hii course mm. unapata mtu amefanya carpentry so akitoka 
mi I normally link them with some organizations in Ziko Inje. Mm -hmm. Ama mafundi zingine wenye wako Inje. Mm -hmm. Yenye najua like, ah, hii hi, hi kampuni iko sawa. Uh, so, I go there. Unaona, naenda na waongelesha kuna vijana wengine waliko prison but wame reform. These are good people. They are no longer bad people because pale kuna di certificate muta napewa. Kwa hizi makos, short courses hini watu wanafanya. Mm -hmm. So, unapata like a player role. I connect them with these groups wale wenye wana exist unaona au wa mafundi kuna wale wenye wanafanya kazi mzuri sana na wako na company kubwa so i connect them with that exactly unaona but unafanya like i'm doing it alone so i was feeling like at least kama tunaweza tunaweza get people those who can support this mm. and we also nurture the talent unaona cuz uh, some weeks ago niliongea na director of Kenya Cultural Center Mr. Michael, mm -hmm. nika muongelesha, nika muusu mamboza space, kama tuneza pata space ya ku showcase the talent ya watu. Mm. Unaona, which is okay with them, wamekubali. So we'll partner with the Kenya Cultural Center, come Kenya National Center, at least to give these youths opportunity. Exactly. So ile, ile, ile kamera nilikuwa nasema ya ile, <laughs> ineza saidi ya hapa sasa. Sendi ya Very true. Yeah. <laughs> Asana, my brother, I mm. wish you well. Thank you so much. I man. wish you well. You're a strong man and a man with a big heart. Mazee. Your final remarks? Mazee, my final ma ma remarks in as I give, I give thanks to everyone who stood with me during that hard time. Na wale wenye wale nichekelea, wale marafiki wale nilenga, pia it was their own decision. Mm -hmm. Unaona. Yeah, and to the lady, to Sarah, wamboy, Sarah Wamboy, me nili ku forgive. Nili forgive sina ishu na sina. From my heart, I have a clean heart. Exactly. Me nili move on. Right now, I have my family. I need to take care of them. Mm -hmm. I need to take care of my mom. Yeah, and to everyone when you are with me through this journey. May God bless them all. DJ Shiti, Maurice Okombo, Honorable Opande, everyone, my brother Muga, everyone, all those who are with me, may God bless them. And my father-in-law, mother-in-law, and to all, exactly, my beloved wife. And above all, thanks to Mwenyezi Mungu Mazo. Kabisi. Aminifanya muema. Yes. Thank you, my brother. Thank you too, for giving me this opportunity. And thanks to Tuko too. Exactly. Mazo. Tuko. Thank you. Tuko, sini Tuko. Tuko. Misisi, yo Tuko. Misisi. Tuendele na yo heart. Kabisi. Muendele na yo. Asante. Asante, Mazo.